Greetings, welcome back to HM Live. I trust you're having a blessed week. Good things are happening. Of course, as I say most weeks, I hope that last Sunday you had some brand new people at church and they've been open to your follow-up visits and you have some brand new home Bible studies. The local church and the week-by-week -week progression of effort, of the investment that is made into making that special is so vitally important. We can have our conferences, we can have our conventions, various meetings, but God's vehicle of intent for reaching the world is through the local church. I was reading um, the book of Genesis again uh, a few days back, and a particular portion of Scripture le leaped out at me. Um, I noted it before in the margin of my Bible. It was, it was this dialogue between Abraham and God. And Abraham has been instructed by the Lord to take his son, his only son, Isaac, and offer him as a sacrifice. Abraham has been obedient to that. And then the Lord simply stops him. He puts a pause into the process. And he, he makes this statement to Abraham, Now I know. God says, now I know. At this moment in time, the God of the universe grasped for sure something that, and it's kind of worked through my mind, that uh, the question, what does God really know about me? What does he really know about you? Uh, the observation I would make is that Abraham Abraham's assessment by God, Abraham being evaluated by God, came only uh, through hardship. It came only through difficulty. And God's knowledge of any of us really comes through the proving ground of various circumstances and situations. And I think it's incumbent upon us that we be faithful in whatever circumstance and situation that we find ourselves in. It seems over the last few days I've had the opportunity to spend some time with some wonderful evangelist, and of course had Brother Godwin in as a guest just a few days back as he was in for uh, Missouri's camp meeting and uh, some others, and we'll be spending some time with some more uh, for your benefit. Uh, the ministry of an evangelist is not, uh, is not some latter-day calling. It's not something that uh, we concocted, but Apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists, fivefold ministry that God has given to the church for accomplishing certain things. And so today we're going to have another evangelist. Well, this, this one's kind of unique for me because for the first time here in HM Live, uh, I'm going to have my son, Lane, who is one of our evangelists, has been part of uh, the evangelistic core of the United Pentecostal Church for the past two years. Uh, Lane's going to be my guest, and I, uh, I've always been hesitant to do anything that would press him to the forefront, probably to both of our uh, demise at times, but I want him to know uh, that his mom and I are particularly proud of him and proud of what he's doing for, for God. And uh, the sacrifices that you and Shelley have gone through, and I guess we can include Wyatt in that, although he doesn't know he's doing any sacrifices. But welcome to HM Live. Glad you're here, son. Thank you. It's good to be here. And uh, again, I reiterate that, um, and I'll use the Bible term as I've heard some others use, I'm sanctified, proud of you, and the work that y'all are doing. Um, just uh, recollecting, not asking for specifics. How many different districts or states have y'all preached in over the last couple of years? Any, um, any idea? Let's see. We've been to probably about seven, seven good. different districts, all the way from uh, Texas across the south up to New York. Good. Well, and that, that kind of mirrors some of my own experience. Preached a little bit in my home district of Louisiana as, as a an evangelist for those seven years and then spent a little time, a lot of time in Indiana and California and some other places. Um, these two years, what are your observations from two years of full-time evangelistic work? And again, I say this, Lane's here, but I, I'm very appreciative of this 
group of, of young men who are coming on, who are stepping into the role of being evangelists, being full-time at this, and it is not without sacrifice, and it's not without challenge. Um, and when one becomes dependent on evangelism for full-time income, uh, that, as I can hearken back to in my own years of doing it, has some unique things. Um, what are your observations? For me, it was uh, it was interesting. I before evangelizing, it was never uh, the office of the evangelist, and and what an evangelist does to me was just something that somebody did, kind of in the meantime, something to do. But for me, after evangelizing, it's become um, I guess you could say more real. It's a, it's a real ministry, a real a real thing. Before I didn't give it much thought, but now. Uh, being so wrapped up in my life, yeah. it's very important to me to see the office of the evangelist and and churches use evangelists. Right. When you use the term office of an evangelist. Describe the distinctives of that office as opposed to that of a of a pastor or teacher. Or my impression of the evangelist is is someone who comes in. Um, they help lift the church uh, to another level. They also give support to the pastor. Um, there are some things that pastors cannot say. Um, they can say, but a lot of the saints better will, to have somebody else yeah, say it. Better for another voice, um, you know. Like um, preaching on pastoral authority, it, it would be much more impacting for an evangelist to come in. I feel and preach on pastoral authority. The pastor can preach it all the time, but it's just kind of one of those light bulb moments for for the saints. Also, the uh, the the act of going out, energizing the church for evangelism and and doing the work of the church. Well, and that goes back to the whole idea of the book of Ephesians of, of uh, these five-fold things being there for the, the edifying of the body for the work of the ministry, building up the body. Um, uh, most of the years I spent evan as an evangelist would have been in the role of an encourager or a revivalist. Um, actually became a much better evangelistic preacher as a pastor than I was while I traveled. Um, we have uh, a growing group, and I'm grateful for that, a growing group of younger preachers who are becoming part of the United Pentecostal Church. And I think there is an intentionality in our fellowship right now toward that. Some of it inspired by statistics that were a bit alarming. Um, as a younger man, who is preaching to and, and establishing a ministry in a different generation than the one I established my ministry in. What do you see as the great challenges, Lane, that are facing you and, and your contemporaries, not just maybe it's something you see somebody else going through? I think the first challenge would have to be, and, and this is going to sound like a negative thing, but I don't feel that it's a negative thing I, because I think we're very much up for the challenge. Is, uh, is proving ourselves. That's the first thing. Um, a lot of elders, it seems, and not, not all the elders, but uh, a good many seem to have a, a lack of confidence in this generation and, and the younger age coming up. And I'm sure that that happened in their lifetime too. So first off is proving ourselves. Um, the second I think we have to wrestle with on, on how to teach and preach the principles of holiness in this society, it's consistently changing. Um, the things that were big issues 10, 15 years ago now are no longer big issues. Right. And um, it's they're only bigger gonna, issues. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're bigger issues, they're more complicated, um, and they're, they're consistently changing and they're starting to pick up speed right. in how rapidly they change. And for this generation, um, we, we're going to have to. Uh, learn and understand how to apply the principles of holiness and doctrine uh, in this society. Well, and, and the strength of that, and, and the strength, the authority, I, I've often said the authority is in the Word of God. It's not what I say about the Word of God. Uh, sadly to me, uh, at times we say that we're people who are preachers of the Word, but the truth of the matter is if you took uh, a CD of a lot of our preaching, there's not much word in our it's, preaching. It's, it's opinions of the it's word. It's what we're what we're saying about the word, and I I, I think we're going to have.